so they're right today. Crank over in a fast sweeper at an indicated 110, which is 20 miles per hour faster than I've ever taken that corner before, and 30 more than has ever felt comfortable. The sound of the screaming of three of hell's loudest demons is bouncing around inside my skull, and a white faced tacho fills my eye line through a smear of dead flies. As the needle surges relentlessly around the clock, when I hear a strangely disturbing noise above the others. For a moment I'm mildly disconcerted, and then I realize what it is. It's me. Cackling at the top of my lungs like a man utterly demented. I know I should never have taken a test ride on a T595. I only went out to buy a tax disc for my little rat bike. As I left stock and church post office, instead of turning right to go home, I inexplicably turned left and went for a thrash up the A40 in the sunshine. And then when I got as far as you and an M40, I was only going to turn round in their car park, and then I was only going to have a fag, and look at the black T595, and then I heard the noise, that their gorgeous looking yellow demonstrator made, with its race chip and can. Suddenly I was asking for a test ride on it, and the bloke who had just brought it back walked in with the biggest grin I have ever seen plastered all over his face whilst I was asking. Then I was sitting on it, flipping the throttle, and listening to the incomparable music, and thinking how tiny and light it felt. Then I was pulling out of their car park, and trying to get to grips with the riding position, as I headed for the twist as I use every day on my commute to work. That riding position was actually excellent, with the exception of the clip-ons, which are still the older pattern on the demonstrator. As such I found it a tad hard on my left wrist when operating the clutch, but in the end I just sapped the grip across my palm, and it was fine. However, Triumph obviously know their market, my vast gut fits the tank perfectly, and within 2 minutes I felt like part of the bike, rather than a rider sat on it. On the first straight bit, coming up behind a couple of cars dibbling along at 60 odd, I dropped a cog, cracked the throttle, and pulled out to pass. Dear. Sweet. Jesus. H. Fucking. Christ. The gorgeous boar became a huge, visceral yet pure and melodic howl. The front lifted off over a cat size I poured it on, and I was hurled forwards at a rate I could never have dreamed of onto the FR. I didn't have to pull out as such, I just thought about it, and I was out there, the aforementioned three demons partying hard beneath the seats, and then I was back in again, once more by the power of thought alone, the cars were little dwindling dots behind me as I went joyously up through the box, approaching a blind crossroads at. Fuck me, that's quick. I squeeze the front brake lever in VFR-esque fashion to reduce velocity, lest summer's yet unseen Volvo pulls out on me. Oh. Suddenly I'm not going quickly at all, and the crossroads is still a long way away, but there is no drama at all, no significant fork dive, nothing into ward, so I release the brake sheepishly, and the back wheel touches the ground again. I soon discover that the only reason you need to change down for an overtake is so you can hear that gorgeous exhaust note flipping the throttle on this thing is a classy religious experience. Bimbling along at 4000 rpm in fourth, whack that throttle wide open and off the beast rockets without a stutter. It keeps accelerating like a guided missile all the way to the red line, making the sort of noises that, well, if they don't stir your soul in ways that it has never been stirred before, it's a pretty good indicator that you are brain dead roll off the throttle, and the burbling, and popping on overrun is almost as good. And then I came to a few proper corners, and my joy turned to utter ecstasy. I've never ridden anything even remotely like it. I did 3 laps of the shell grip roundabout, that marked the self imposed limit of my test ride, then fired it out back the way I had just come on a wave of sheer steam hammer torque and howling exhaust, thrashing my way back up the twisty section I had just ripped, dispatching traffic with utter and unaccustomed disdain as I really hit the groove on the Daytona. When I got back to the A40 turnoff, I just couldn't bring myself to head down there, and I carried on into more glorious twisters. When I eventually turned round and rocketed back, I did turn off, but once again I couldn't bring myself to stop just yet, and shot off down the A40. The short section of nasty ripples, that has the VFR actually entirely off the deck at a ton didn't do more than pop my arts an inch out of the seat, at similar velocity, and then it was into the wide waggling sweepers, with loads of visibility and a good surface, and I have to say I went utterly mental, and things just got better and better. When I got to the first village, I turned round, and came back the same way, and it was there, that I caught myself cackling out loud in delight as I nailed a sweeper at 110 miles per hour at which speed it was starting to look a bit like a proper corner, and realized that there was actually plenty more to come. When I pulled back into the M40 car park, 
I found the only thing I'd like to criticize on the whole bike, a cull at its reversing lights as I bundled past his rear, and I hit the horn as a precaution, the weedy part was a surprise. To be in keeping with the rest of the bike, I was expecting a ship's foghorn, I should have just lit the throttle. I pulled up in front of the showroom, shut down and just sat there, utterly dazed. What a weapon. Holy shit, what a weapon. When I handed the keys back, I was almost shaking at the intensity of the experience, and yes, I had an enormous grin glued to my face. It'll be a while, but I will have one. As I rode away on the VFR, back up the A40, I realized for the first time how much effort it took to throw it through a corner, how heavy it feels, how soft the suspension is, etc etc. 